Welcome. My name is Brandon. Please join me on this tour of Harmar Mall in Roseville, Minnesota. Roseville is an inner ring suburb of St. Paul, Minnesota. It was incorporated in 1948 and had a population of around 6,000 residents in 1950. The population grew to around 34,000 residents in 1970 and has remained around that size to today. Roseville has had a number of indoor malls throughout the years, with Harmar being its first. Other indoor malls have included Rosedale Center, which was one of the four original Dales, Hamlin Shopping Center, Rosedale Commons, and Crossroads Center. Crossroads Center still exists, but no longer has an internal hallway, at least not one that is accessible to the public. A bit of trivia, Roseville is also home to the original Target store, which is still located across the street from Harmar Mall. You may know that Harmar is a single-story building with a basement, but did you know about its secret second floor? Stay to the end to find out more. Harmar may be the only mall in the world with a person named after it, while Harmar itself is named after its founders, Harold and Marie Slawick, Har for Harold and Mar for Marie, the singer Harmar Superstar picked the name for himself after many fond memories of spending time in this mall. Okay, it's his stage name, but I'm counting it. Before Harmar, a strip mall called the Snelling Hub stood on this site. It was torn down, and the construction started on Harmar Mall in August 1961 with architect Robert W. Fendler and mall designer Willard Thorson. Two months later, another mall designed by Thorson, Apache Plaza, had its grand opening a mere five miles northwest of Harmar. Sadly, during construction of Harmar, Harold died on July 7, 1962. The mall opened 13 months later in August 1963. Some early tenants included J.C. Penney's, Kresge's, Snyder Drug, Hove's Grocery Store, and Midway Ford. A mall with a car showroom? Yes, the Slawicks owned the Midway Ford. Hove's was a chain of grocery stores that were rebranded as Lund's in 1964. In 1969, the large Rosedale Center opened less than two miles north of Harmar. By the 1970s, Midway Ford closed and became Cicero's Pizza. J.C. Penney's closed in 1977 and became Van Arsdell's, which later became Marshall's. The grocery store closed by 1981. Kresge's were renamed Kmart in 1977. I do not have a date for the Kresge's or Snyder's closings at Harmar. I remember small stands in the hallway when I was a kid. I mostly remember them selling junk food. Ah, this Barnes & Noble. I remember visiting Roseville's first location when it was in the Rosedale Marketplace strip mall. But this location gives me warm fuzzies. What? A, a coffee shop in a bookstore? What's a cappuccino? Oh, this is amazing! And people can just, they can just sit here and drink coffee and read books? Teenager me was blown away. At the end of this hall was the Man Movie Theater. Harmar first expanded when they opened the Harmar 1 and 2 on September 16th, 1970, as a luxury theater with two screens. Screen 1 played On a Clear Day You Can See Forever, while Screen 2 played Two Mules for Sister Sarah, starring Clint Eastwood. The space on the right was the location of the second Boy Scout supply store. Getting back to the movies, in 1977, the larger of the two screens was twinned, creating a total of three screens. I'm ready for advanced calculus with these amazing math skills. In 1981, the grocery store was transformed into an additional eight screens. The original theater 
was now Harmar 1 through 3, and the addition was 4 through 11. The two buildings were completely separate. To quote from filmtech.com, moving film from one theater to another was another great annoyance. Pearl Harbor had to be broken down into reels and rebuilt since it would not fit on our movie movers. Imagine carrying a two and a half hour movie on your shoulder down a flight of stairs, out onto an icy sidewalk, and up another set of stairs. My strongest memory of the theater was watching the over four hour long Gettysburg movie with my dad. It was the first time I went to a movie with an intermission. However, I was disappointed that the intermission was only a few minutes long. You can't go on to the mall, my dad said. The movie is starting soon again. I wanted an actual break from such a long movie, especially as a young teenager with no interest in the American Civil War. By the 21st century, AMC had taken ownership of the movie theater. AMC opened a brand new 14-screen theater in nearby Rosedale Center in December 2006. They closed the now aging Harmar Movie Theater location the same month. The 1 through 3 building is now Staples, while the 4 through 11 building is now K&G. Wow, look at that ceiling. It's a shame that its view has been partially blocked. I wonder what you would find above the drop ceiling. The site of Kyoto Sushi has a lot of history. Going back to the 1970s, people fondly remember the Farrell's ice cream shop, where one could order the Lollapalooza, more commonly known by its nickname, the Zoo. A gigantic bowl of ice cream brought out with much fanfare. People who finished the daunting task received a pin that read, I made a pig of myself at Farrell's. In the 1989 film, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, there was a scene where Napoleon Bonaparte and a group of children eat a gigantic sundae called the Ziggy Piggy. It was kind of like that. In the late 1980s, professors replaced Farrell's. It became more of a restaurant with the changeover. I remember professors selling old-timey stick candy at the cash register in many flavors, but despite eating there several times, I have no memories of the food. I asked my parents about professors, and all they could remember was that it was the place with the trough of ice cream. I do not know what immediately replaced professors, but the location became a Buffalo Wild Wings in the 2000s. It has been Kyoto Sushi since the early 2010s. When the mall opened, there were public restrooms down in the basement. Now it's mall management offices. Many people also have fond memories of eating at or working at Harmar Pizza and then Cicero's Pizza, but that closed before I could form my own memories. A lot of other tenants have come and gone from Harmar so I'm sharing the big names and places that gave people a lot of good memories. On June 14, 1981, disaster struck the Harmar area in the form of an F3 tornado, doing minor cosmetic damage to the mall, but causing more severe damage to nearby businesses. Over 150 cars were damaged, Glass and debris injured a dozen people in the vicinity as well. The tornado had traveled all the way from Medina. There were two fatalities. The tornado lasted 26 minutes, creating a path that was a continuous 15 miles long. On April 26, 1984, another tornado hit the area, but this time, Apache Plaza took the brunt of the damage. The ruined portions of the mall were rebuilt, but Apache Plaza never fully recovered. It was demolished in 2004. A little bit more trivia from the 1980s. In 1988, the mall expanded again with the Highland Superstore and TJ Maxx. Cub Foods is now in that addition.
Oh, another quick note, the entrance is gone, but somewhere around here was the first Boy Scout supply shop. I remember going here more often than the second location that I mentioned earlier. The closing of the movie theater in 2006 started the demise of the smaller tenants at Harmar. Without foot traffic for moviegoers, businesses that relied on people getting a snack lost a lot of income. Let's jump ahead to the current decade. What I find different about Harmar Mall is that while it has several empty storefronts, all of its anchors are filled. Look at this list. Burlington, Cub Foods, Marshalls, Home Goods, K&G Fashion, Michaels, Barnes & Noble, Famous Footwear, and Staples. Heck, despite not having a proper food court, there are several places to eat, and many of them you can access from within the mall. This is personal speculation, but I think the layout of the mall is only hurting internal businesses. One can get to all of the larger tenants and the fast food and sit-down restaurants from external access. Former tenants such as Schuler Shoes and David's Bridal only had internal access and left Harmar, but remained in Roseville in other malls that gave them external access. Oh, oh, here it is. Harmar's secret second floor. Okay, it's not really a secret as it's open to the public, but I was stunned to discover that the mall had a second floor while watching another mall video. I grew up here. I didn't go to Harmar every week, but I knew it had one floor and a basement. Where did the second floor come from? Turns out, this section of the mall used to be the TCF bank. The old slow brown elevator belonged to the bank. After the bank moved out, management sliced up the building into smaller tenants and extended the food hallway through the old bank to the outside. Returning to my comments about the current state of the mall, I think adaptation has been key to Harmar survival. It doesn't have large anchors anymore, but it has the 10 junior anchors I mentioned earlier. Viewing the mall from the parking lot, there are only three stores with label scars. You have to go inside to see all of the empty storefronts. Will management remove the inner hallway? Only time will tell. Management is very friendly to mall walkers with the building opening two to three hours before the stores do. There is enough space to make some decent laps. I personally find the layout better than a strip mall. One could shop at, say, Burlington Coat Factory, and then cut through the hallway during a frigid Minnesota winter to shop for more clothes at K&G. There are plenty of people walking around on a cold Sunday afternoon in January. The footage from July was taken about an hour from close on a Monday, so there were less people. Why did I shoot some footage in January and then more footage in July? I'll be honest, I, I lost some of it. I have backups of backups, but I still managed to lose four segments. At least I was able to recapture what I lost and film the now abandoned Hallmark. I like this food hallway. It's not really a food court, but if I worked here, I would love to have a quiet place to eat. Also, all of the restaurants have their own seating. Thank you for joining me on this tour of Harmar Mall. If you are ever near the Twin Cities, 
be sure to check this place out. I hope you have a great day. Take care. Imagine carrying a two and a half hour movie on your shoulder down a flight of stairs, out onto an icy sidewalk, and up another set of stairs. <laughs>